This project is sponsored by PCBWay. This year, PCBWay is celebrating the 10th anniversary of its successful existence. On the occasion of this event, PCBWay provided its users with more conveniences such as big savings for certain products as well as discount of up to 80%. From July 1st to July 31st, log into the PCBWay site and start the PCBWay 10th anniversary tour Well, you will enjoy, enjoy coupons, lucky draw, exclusive badges, unboxing blind boxes and many other surprises. PCBWay is always your great choice. Hello, a solid state Tesla coil is a type of Tesla coil that uses solid state components such as transistors, dials and capacitors to generate high voltage, high frequency alternating current electricity. They have high efficiency, the possibility of longer term work as well as a compact dimensions. Solid state Tesla coils come in various types and designs each with, with its own characteristics and applications. This time I will describe to you how to make a Tesla coil that works in the so-called Class E, which in addition to being simple and cheap to make, it is also very efficient if it is well adjusted. The original design is by Richie Branet, followed by several versions including that of Stevie Watts, which uses antenna feedback and PLL. I decided to make the lab codes version based around an adjustable Schmidt trigger oscillator uh, with a range of 100 kHz to 5 MHz. And as usual I, ad I adapted the project based on the materials I had at the moment and at the same time simplified it, simplified it considerably. However, the end result is excellent and with a voltage of 70 volts the length of the spark is 10 to 15 centimeters, which is, which is significantly more than the one in the original project. Due to the fact that I did not use an interrupter, in this case there is no option for an audio modulator, which is also conditioned by the cheap MOSFET driver integrated circuit TC426. And similar to any Tesla coil, the basic parts are the primary and secondary coils. In this particular case, the primary consists, consists of 20 windings of copper wire with diameter of 2.5 mm wound on a plastic cylinder with a diameter of 11 cm. The secondary contains 1,300 1, windings of, of isolated copper wire on a plastic body with a diameter of 7 cm and height of about 20 cm. The diameter of this thin wire is 0.14 mm. The calculated resonance frequency of the secondary together with the top load is about 260 kHz and in practice somewhat higher. The driver part consists of several components. Adjustable Schmidt trigger oscillator with range of 50 Hz to 2.5 MHz made with a 74HC 14 hex inverter integrated circuits. Then TC 426 chip MOSFET driver integrated circuit, powerful MOSFET, I use BUZ325 but it is better to use the more powerful IRFP460. Next a polypropylene capacitor uh, with a capacity of 1 nanofarad or more depending on the tuning. Uh, 7805 voltage regulator and next 12 volt power supply and to power the MOSFET in the primary coil instead of full wave I use a half wave single diode power supply with a small 1 microfarad filter capacitor primarily due to the fact that I could not use an interrupter due to the lack of an enable pin on the MOSFET driver integrated circuit. If you want to ideally adjust the Tesla coil, uh, you definitely need a two-channel oscilloscope and a lot of patience. Uh, the setup method is explained in detail on the original project page. This time I will explain the basic setup procedure assuming we don't have any instruments. First we apply a voltage of about 20 volts to the MOSFET uh, and with a CFL bulb close to the transformer, 
we need to turn the potency multi this multi turn potentiometer uh, until the bulb lights up. We keep spinning until we get a maximum intensity. Next, we need to uh, change the number of windings of primary. Uh, looking for the highest intensity of the bulb, but we should keep in mind that the number of windings should not be less than 4 on 3 because of excessive current that can flow through the MOSFET. Uh, let the polyester capacitor that forms the E-class be a few nanofarads and then we can experiment with smaller values. Uh, now we can gradually increase the voltage controlling the temperature of the MOSFET. In my case the maximum voltage of re for reliable operation of the device was about 75 volts. Let me mention that the use of a variac when testing any Tesla coil is of great help not only in terms of testing but also saving relatively expensive semiconductor elements so if we want to go a little more seriously in this area the variac is the most important component As can be seen, this Tesla coil generates a nice branch spark similar to that of a spark gap Tesla coil which is probably due to the low resonant frequency of the secondary as well as the pulsating power supply of the MOSFET. At the beginning I mentioned why I couldn't use a classic interrupter so I made a very simple Arduino project with a relay and two potentiometers that can be used to change the duration of the pulse and the pulses and the pauses between the pulses. In this way the contacts of the relay periodically interrupt the power supply from the oscillator and act as a kind of mechanical interrupter. Due to the slowness of the relay, the maximum frequency of this interrupter is limited to a few hertz. Uh, the following is a presentation of the operation of this device with an interrupter. Now I can also increase the voltage of the MOSFET and the sparks are significantly larger. In this mode of operation the MOSFET is almost cold and I guess if I used IRFP 460 the results would be much better. And finally a short conclusion, this Tesla coil, although it's apparently simple to make, actually requires a lot of knowledge, patience and tools to set it up ideally. However, even with less, with less experience it can be tuned quite well with the trial and error method. 
In fact, a large part of the pleasure in making this type of devices is due to the long lasting and unfortunately often expensive way of setting it up. Therefore, in the end, the visual effect is really amazing. Uh, important safety note, please do not attempt to recreate the experiments shown on this video unless you are familiar with high voltage safety techniques. Direct current even above 60 volts may be lethal even when the AC supply voltage has been disconnect disconnected due to the stored energy in the capacitors. I have no responsibility on any hazards caused by this circuit. Be very careful. This is a humble request.